You've heard the saying that it's not what you make, it's what you keep. And there are a number of ways where you can keep more of what you make. But what you really need to know is how to keep more of what you keep, because that's really what matters most. You know, think of it this way. Between now and when you want to quit working, you're only going to generate a finite amount of money. So what's your plan to keep as much of that as possible? Well, if you want to know the answer to that question, stick around. The best place to provide an answer to the question, what's your plan to keep as much as you'll make between now and you know when you hope to quit working someday is to first look back on how much you've made in the past decade or so. Now, here's what I mean. Think about how much you bring home every year. You know, what's your net annual income? In my book, The Debt-Free Millionaire, I created a sample family that brought home $55,200 in net annual income. Now, if they averaged that amount over just the past five years, that would mean they brought home $276,000. That's well over a quarter of a million dollars over just the past five years. 10 years, and you're talking well over a half million dollars. What are your numbers? The big question is how much of that small fortune have you kept? I'm guessing it's probably not as much as you'd hoped. Now, I can hear what's going on in your head. You're thinking you have bills to pay and a life to live. You know, I totally get that. You have to deposit your income into a bank account, you know, usually like a, a checking account. And from that account, you pay your bills. And when you pay those bills, the cash is gone, and you keep working so you can keep bringing home the bacon. And then you repeat this cycle over and over again, month after month, year after year, and all your take-home pay gets used up paying bills. Now, the problem with that scenario is the type of account you're depositing your income into. The typical bank checking account is designed just for you to pay your bills. What you need is an account that's designed to accumulate a stockpile of cash while you're simultaneously paying your bills. This is how you keep as much of what you keep from what you make as possible, if that makes any sense. Now, fortunately, there is an account that will allow you to pay a portion of your bills while the money you're using to pay those bills simultaneously is earning you interest and dividends for your future. These accounts are called private family banks. What a private family bank allows you to do is deposit a portion of your income so that amount can be used to pay off all of your debt and build a pile of cash with the same dollars at the same time. Typically, you can pay off all of your debt in like less than a decade with a private family banking account. Now, I'm talking all of your debt, you know, your mortgage, your cars, do you have student loans, credit cards, you name it. And when you've paid off your debt, you'll have tens of thousands of dollars in the bank by the time you're also debt free. And using this strategy will save you up to $100,000 or more in interest payments. And all of this is possible with your current cash flow. Now what you're doing is redirecting a portion of your cash flow into a private family bank and then using that amount to pay off your debt. For the sample family from my book, they pay off all of their debt in nine years and nine months. And they save $169,169.20 and they have $49,725 in the bank by the time they're debt free. But that is just the beginning. Before they started their private family bank, they were paying $2,575 a month for their house payment, uh, their two car payments and their four credit cards. But once they're debt free, they can start another private family bank with that cash flow. And if they started their first private family bank when they were 35, they were completely debt free when they're 45. Then they used the money they were losing on debt payments to start another private family bank. And by the time they're 65, they'd have a projected $1,036,079 in the bank. Remember when I said they were bringing home $55,200 each year, and we established that they started their first private family bank when they were 35. Between 35 and 65, they work 30 years. At $55,200 a year, that means they'll bring home $1,656,000. If they have $1,036,079 in their private family banks, that means they've kept 62.6% of every dollar they brought home. That's 62 cents they're going to keep from every single dollar in net pay they'll earn between when they started their first private family bank and when they decided 
They just simply wanted to quit working. Now that's what I call a plan to keep as much of what you make as possible. Here's a few more tidbits you need to know about the private family bank. First, the funds you deposit into a private family bank are not tied to the stock market. So you don't have to worry about crashes or corrections, you know, depleting your bank when you need it most. Second, the funds in your private family bank earn interest and dividends tax-free, and there are strategies to access those funds whenever you want tax-free. Third, speaking of accessing the funds inside your private family bank, you can whenever you want. There are no restrictions or qualifications to satisfy. I mean, after all, it's your money in your account, so why would there be? Now, you're probably thinking, is there more to this private family bank thing than what's covered in this short little video? And the answer to that question is, yep, there is, and you can find out more by clicking the link below. A private family bank is a simple but powerful way to make sure that you keep as much as you can. It helps redirect your flow of cash from flowing out where it's making banks and creditors and everybody else rich and flowing back to you where it can make you rich instead. So click the link below and find out how a private family bank works. And if you like this video, please click the like button and then let me know what you thought was most helpful in the comments. I cannot tell you how much your feedback means to me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.